Lord put a message uh, on my heart this week where um, it found quite of, I believe, an uh, applicable title. The title this morning is Finding Peace in the Midst of Lawlessness and Deceit. Maybe something to do with the times we live in? Possibly. So, Finding Peace in the Midst of Lawlessness and Deceit. I'll read one scripture and then I'll pray. I'm reading from uh, John 16:33. <clears throat> thank you Lord you've already said these things in advance I'm reading from the scripture these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace in the world you will have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world thank you Lord Jesus that you, you have spoken these words not only to your disciples, to your people under your hearing, that time physically in the nation of Israel, but also now to us, recorded for us as an encouragement for us to be strengthened, for your people, for your body to be strengthened, for anybody listening online, for anybody physically under my hearing here, Lord, strengthen us through your word that we may be empowered according to your will. Thank you, Father, for your provision. Thank you, Lord, that you will speak to us this morning. And I pray, Lord, that you use me as a vessel to share your word in power. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> a little crumb. <coughs> My throat. <coughs> Did you ever happen that? It's really annoying. Anyway so comforting that the, the Lord has spoken these words to us and we see here the word tribulation and a, and a, a word came to me uh, yesterday doing some work in the backyard and landscaping and I don't know about you but sometimes the most profound thoughts drop into my mind that happens in my life anyway doing the mo most unprofound things like painting or um, pulling some weeds and it's like suddenly a, a, a thought drops in my mind and it's also in connection with um, it's very simple but I think it's profound and also connection with last Sunday's message is that uh, tribulation and it's a lot of Christians and I read that scripture from 2nd Thessalonians uh, last Sunday as well um, that people are thinking we're already in the beginning of the tribulation we're absolutely not everything we see now is man-made the virus is man-made the shortages are man-made apparently the shortage of oil absolute nonsense of diesel a byproduct of petrol it is all man-made and it's also self-fulfilling prophecies if you say in advance there's going to be a shortage of this and this. Of course there's going to be a shortage. Everybody's running to get it. So all of it is psychological. Yeah. It is biological. It is man-made. The tribulation, may I comfort you with those words, is 100% from God. It says with every plague, with every vial, with every bowl, but every angel proclaiming it, it is clearly the Lord pouring it out on this earth. It is not a man-made disease from a certain lab in a certain country. The, they know, the people also know, and they shake their fist at God. They're not shaking their fist at their government. Or the Antichrist. They're shaking their fist at God and gnashing their teeth. I'm willing to repent because they've already taken the mark of the beast and it seems that, that once they've taken it they are unable to repent but praise God that's, and that's why I'm saying these words we still live in the time dispensation of grace where all men can come to him and receive salvation yeah so I want to start with this encouragement we're not in the New King James uses the word tribulation, but we are not, it is a tribulation period, but it's not 
were not in the Great Tribulation. 2 Timothy 3.1 Reading from my favourite translation, uh, this particular scripture from Amplified, 2 Timothy 3 1, but understand this that in the last days, dangerous times of great stress and trouble will come. Difficult days that will be hard to bear. Well, couldn't that translation be more applicable in understanding the times we're living in? And based on the scripture, I want to discuss four things, how to overcome. The Lord Jesus said, I have overcome the world, but how are we going to overcome? First of all, standing on that promise He has given us. And I think it was very uh, appropriate to speak about it before the 17th of December. It is very quiet from certain government leaders, and when it's quiet, I am concerned. Yeah. But four things. How to find peace. And it's all based on the majority of the scriptures I'm reading this morning. It's all based on one psalm, and based on Psalm 37. And the first one I want us to encourage was this, do not fret. Which could also be translated as worry. Or do not be anxious. We're reading from the first verse in Psalm 37. So this is the first key I want us to give. Do not fret because of evildoers. Nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. So it's, it's not a multiple choice. It's a command. Do not fret. And I fully understand how you can feel if you read the headlines or things online or a paper or hear reports and may I give and I'm speaking just as much as myself I'm limiting myself of what I'm allowing to listen to mainstream media is completely out of my life I don't even listen to one word I can't help seeing some headlines or hearing the radio at work that's about the only thing but if you if you read too much and as you can see that nations and also our nation a lot of people are being brainwashed we need to brainwash ourselves with the word of God and be properly informed but really limit yourself with your information sources because if you listen too much to it you get overwhelmed so I encourage us to be well informed from the right resources if you don't have those talk with us after on the, over lunch because there are some good resources that actually publish the truth. But even then, don't read it constantly and fill yourself with uh, only listening to end time preachers, which some of them are excellent. But don't fill yourself only with that because you can't cope. Yeah. You can't, you, you can't. That is just practical advice I give to myself and to all of us. Do not fret because of evildoers. And it's so easy to just get worked up. It says in Psalm 37, same, staying in that Psalm, verse 7 and 8, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently. <laughs> That's easier written down than done, isn't it? And wait patiently for Him. Do not fret because of Him who prospers in His way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. There's three commands here. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. So if you give in to these three things, which it can easily happen in the, regarding the things we see around us, cease from anger. I, I, when I hear certain things, and when you know the facts of how many people are suffering or have died from the side effects of a particular untested medication, I get angry. But you can't stay angry. Because it says, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Some of you might not believe that, but the person who will be married to me probably does. I can get pretty 
pretty feisty. <laughs> if you met me 30 years ago, or longer ago, in my Bible smuggling days, you met the Lord has worked on me. Amen. Marriage also helps. <laughs> but I can get pretty feisty. Forsake wrath. You know, the Lord doesn't necessarily use weak people. He just molds them. <laughs> yeah? Into, and it's same as with Moses. Moses was feisty, but it took the Lord 40 years to get him settled down. <laughs> and make him follow every command. And he stopped doing things in his own strength. I also have stopped doing in my own strength. Forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. It causes harm to your heart. And, and to, to your health, anxiety, uh, may, many medical people will agree with that. It can be the greatest causes of a stimulator of horrible diseases, including the big C. Anx anxiety really this sets off or triggers a lot of other heart and the other diseases. I don't even want to mention by name in church. We only pray against them. But yes, it can be a trigger. So that's the first thing, but it also has a rippling effect if you, for your family and for your wider family, build bridges. And, uh, you know, I see some, I saw this week somebody driving around with a uh, fully masked alone in their car. And I felt like stopping them and saying, <laughs> what is wrong with you? But I didn't. Yeah, th th that really rocks me up. I'm sorry. And, but then again, I f then immediately the Lord convicts me and I feel compassion because that person is probably the frightened the bejeebus out of them by ABC and the other information yeah. sources. Probably. Yeah? So, and we need to feel then compassion. So, anger, wrath, and fretting is going to uh, cause harm to our own organs, our own life, and our wider family. So we need to build bridges, which I'm trying to do at work as well and other places. But man, it's easy to get into a discussion. <coughs> so may I just give this as practical advice? Continue reading of Psalm 37, verse 9. May this also be a confidence. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord shall inherit the earth. Can we just do that? <clears throat> I get up very early in the morning and I encourage all of us if we can do that regarding your work, but it's the most precious time where there's no phone, no noise, and it goes too fast. I, I have I given, given myself about a half an hour to read the chapter in the New Testament, chapter in the New Testament in the Psalm of Proverbs every morning and it just it's the most precious time and it's like I want to wait on the Lord for before I start my day but mind you I did make a coffee before I start <laughs> that's the only thing and it's the only distraction I have to confess but it's my most precious time and, and Allow, if you don't do that, <clears throat> and I understand some of the shift work, you might do it in a different order. The point is, you need to find that time in these times even more so than ever before. It's, it's my source of life, my source of peace. <coughs> I wouldn't know how else to, to find that peace. Reading also from Psalm 37. And just remember, if you see certain people and they're declaring certain things over us, that evildoers shall be cut off. That those who are responsible long term for the death of millions, directly or indirectly, they will stand before the judgment throne of God. Psalm 37, verse 12 to 17. <coughs> The wicked plots against the just, just and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees that his day is coming. 
The wicked have drawn the needle, so, so a sword, and have bent their bow, their bow, to cast down the poor and needy, to slay those who are of up, upright conduct. Their sword shall enter their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. And this is just again confirming what I say is just don't fret, don't get angry, but be alert. That's what the Apostle Peter says, that we need to be alert, we need to be sober, we need to know the truth. But also know, and that's a great help for me, I don't want anybody to be lost, and we'll come to that in a minute. But it's also a comfort to know that these people who think they are so powerful and go all to a little gathering in their kerosene using private jets and then telling, uh, flying to Davo in Switzerland or to Scotland and telling the rest of the world I mean of course, do you think they're eat, eating meals there without meat? <laughs> Are you kidding? So all these millionaires and billionaires are going to tell the middle class and the poor nations really what we need to do and what we need to eat. But my comfort I have is that their day is coming unless they repent. Yes. It's not like that I, you know, I'm glad about that judgment. We don't want anybody to be, to be lost. But it's interesting that James has very, very harsh words to say about the rich. It's almost like prophetic, talking about the times of these days where the rich oppress the poor. These verses we just read assures us that the Lord will judge the wicked who murder innocent children in the womb, ending of life early, giving it a nice complicated word, euthanasia. Those, he will judge those who do sex trafficking, the worship of creation above the Creator, and adding more letters of the alphabet to what God called male and female. Yeah. And last but not least, mankind has not learned from the Nazis and the Nuremberg trials. The enforcing of harmful medications yeah. that have not undergone the proper clinical trials and causing and will cause uncounted harm and suffering. And the mainstream media and tech companies suppressing the truth. Isn't it interesting, we also read last Sunday about those who suppress the truth. It says in Psalm 94, 21, they gather together against the life of the righteous. And I picked this scripture because of the word blood. And condemn innocent blood. Where does the medication go? Interesting. It's fun, interesting that a lot of scriptures are actually prophetic without realizing it and condemn innocent blood. But innocent blood will cry out. So we talk about not do not fret. We're now going to the second one and I have three words for this. Trust, trust and trust. And again based on Psalm 37.3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. Again, a lot of, like I said, the Word of God is prophetic. Some of us might be concerned, and I think it's wise, following the example of Joseph, stocking up for the years of famine. Yeah? It says it also in the scriptures that the fool will not see what is coming and he will not prepare for disaster. So it's wise if you have stocked up. But at the same time, we need to feed on his faithfulness. Because your stocks will run out at some point in time if you're pretty much banned from any place to buy food. Yeah. Praise God, I let us pray this is not going to happen. But this is a promise. Dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. The Lord will provide, especially if you have young children. Don't fret. Don't worry. 
I can understand if you send your children off to school, your thoughts, you have thoughts there. What are they going to do with my children? Trust, trust, and trust. But also be wise. Feed on His faithfulness. Feed on His faithfulness. Because that's what the devil wants, is you're going to panic, you're going to fret, you're going to be angry, and then you lose your testimony. Yeah? It only causes harm. Feed on His faithfulness. Staying in Psalm 37, verse 5. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. What shall He bring to pass? Salvation. Does salvation only include like, well, when I die, I will, praise God, end up in paradise, I end up in third heaven, I end up to be with the Lord. No, salvation encompasses salvation for all of us. Have you noticed in the New Testament, and especially in the book of Acts, that whole households were saved? You claim that over your household, over your children, and we have done that from when our children were in, in the cradle. We said, me and my household will be saved. We laid hand on our children. I'm not talking about when they were teenagers laying on hands. Um, I'm talking about blessing. <laughs> no, just a, just a joke. But um, we laid hands on them and saying, me and my household will be saved. We pray protection over them. Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. May I encourage us, I just wrote this down, I'm reading it. Um, <clears throat> the Lord remains sovereignly in control of all things. The events of 2021, listen carefully, working exactly out as God anticipated. He did not panic when Trump didn't get re-elected because it was according to God's plan. Not that he made people suffer in Afghanistan by the withdrawal of the troops, not that he made shortages, they're all man-made, but it was according to God's pre-planned plan for this world. As God anticipated thousands of years ago, the Bible tells us also that those who work to create a tyrannical Marxist world order will only succeed for a short time. Read Revelation Daniel 2 and Revelation 18 and 19. They will be destroyed at the second coming of Jesus. The good news connected to that is that the rapture is quite a few years, we're not talking about hundreds of years, but quite a few years before the second coming. Possibly around three between three to four years, as far as I understand the scriptures, before the second coming, or possibly seven, seven years. There's all different varying opinions about that, but we're not talking about a lot of years. Yeah? So let us look forward to that. Now, it is difficult, you read a lot of few scriptures, Pastor, about waiting. Pastor, I can't even wait for the red light to turn green. It is difficult to wait, which uh, happens to be another theme in the psalm. So we discussed, do not fret, we discussed trust, yeah, now we're discussing waiting patiently. Not one of my strengths, but the Lord is working on me. Psalm 37, verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. We already read that before, but I'm re-emphasizing that. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Now we might be tempted to say, Lord, how long? How long do we need to listen to this nonsense? How long do I need to hear all this stuff about the changing of, of uh, sexes outside male and female, of all this politically woke, correct stuff? Sometimes you just... You just want to run away. How long, Lord, do I need to listen to all these new mandates? You know why? Because the Lord is so gracious and merciful that it's beyond our comprehension. 
and I want us to give us something to ponder on. The realization of the Lord's patience will help us out in, and put this in perspective. And this is the next question I want us to ask ourselves. What would have happened if God had judged us immediately for our sins? Looking back on your life when you were a young Christian or even recently, you might be quick to say, Lord, send judgment to this earth. Do you really want this? Do you know that the Lord's patience is an expression of His mercy and grace? The Lord Jesus, sorry, Father God, the, the angel of the Lord, which is probably a Christophany, as they call it in the Old Testament, an appearance of Christ already in the Old Testament, He was saying to Abraham, gave Abraham promises. And He's saying, I'm going to give you this land where you stand your, with your feet. I'm going to give you this land. But the sins of the Amorites is not found full yet. And it took over four centuries, actually to be exact according to Bible scholars, 430 years from that promise to when the Israelites crossed the Jordan, which was the second generation growing up in the desert. And it is 40 years. Yeah? So over four centuries of <coughs> grace and mercy and patience. And those nations were very sinful. And the oppression of the Israelites was so heavy under Egypt. And the Israelites were crying out, Lord save us! And Egypt stands for this world, right? We all understand that. Lord save us out of this world. Lord help us for making bricks without straw. Lord help us for this endless job of building sphinxes and pyramids. And then we don't even get properly paid for it. Lord help us. But the Lord was saying, I know, I have heard your cries, but because I'm so merciful, I don't want to punish the Amorites and the Canaanites yet, because I don't want anybody to be lost. Isn't that true for today? And also looking at our own lives, thank you Lord for your patience. I was looking back on my own life, of the mistakes I've made in ministry or in life in general. They, only, they say you usually know how to be a pastor by the time you retire. <laughs> you know the mistakes we've made and it's like, thank you Lord, you've been so patient. Now I understand why you're so patient with everybody else. Because if you had judged me then for the mistakes, well, that's a nice word for sins. <laughs> I'm not talking about blatant sin, but just doing things maybe in our own strength or just going our own path or haven't heard the Lord correctly. And the Lord is so patient with us, He's like, all right, you didn't get it this time, I'll give you the next lesson. Till you get it. For some, they need more lessons than others. And the Lord is so patient, it's like, okay, now you got it. The reason that it took the Lord, uh, 40 years with Moses to get him ready for this awesome task is because 3 years and 364 days didn't work. Uh, sorry, 39 years and 364 days didn't work. It took 40 years to get Moses ready. And also for us, it is, thank you Lord for your patience. 2 Peter 3, 9. And this is confirming what I was just saying. So hold on. The Lord does not delay as though He were unable to act, to act and is not slow about His promise as some count slowness but is extraordinarily patient toward you not wishing for anyone any to perish but for all to come to repentance. That's why sometimes maybe especially at the end of the year we feel like oh Lord how much longer, how much longer do I need to go through these hardships? And it could be completely unrelated maybe to politics or the world events. It could be also in our personal life or some health issues in our body. Oh, Lord, how long? But it's really because of God's grace and mercy and He's willing to wait and allowing His children to go to hard times because He doesn't want anybody to be lost. But we are close, we are around the corner. Furthermore, on the earth, such as will happen during the seven-year tribulation. 
We are waiting for the Lord's appearing when He will take us to the place He is now preparing for us. John 14, verse 1 to 3. And this is all to do with, with the title of this morning, Finding Peace in the Midst of Lawlessness and Deceit. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions or dwellings, some translations say. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Hold on to this promise, people. Hold on. Don't grow tired or weary. Don't give up. Don't allow yourself to become angry or discouraged or give up on our faith because of that. But hold on strong. And look up to the hills. There's not, maybe, not many hills here, but you know what I mean, spiritually speaking. Besides up to Glasshouse Mountains. But look up. Where, where does our help come from? From the Lord. Don't despair. Don't give up. You might be fighting marriage difficulties. You might be fighting some things in your body or financial difficulties. You will overcome. For our citizenship, Philippians 3.20, for our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly wait. Remember? Wait patiently. Eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Greek word for wait denotes an eager anticipation of something. And last but not least, so I'm not just waiting patiently, but focus on our eternal inheritance. Focus on eternity. And this is the last scripture I'm reading this morning. This morning. Focus on eternity. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17 to 18. For our present troubles are small. Yes, say amen there. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. There's plenty of those. But rather we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen, which is our eternal future with the Lord. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. I hope this was an encouragement to us and I was preaching just as much to myself. Do not despair. Do not be panic about the 17th of December. Do not worry about government mandates. Because previous generations have gone through this, but we focus our eyes on Him who will provide, we will come through. Can we stand on our feet please if we can? Thank you Lord Jesus, we can be in your house this morning and I pray Father God that we leave the service this morning and the fellowship encouraged and strengthened in the faith through these words we just read, a few scriptures we read from Psalm 37, that we'll be encouraged by these words and be strengthened and face the weak face the future no matter what and that we will overcome because you have overcome this world in Jesus name in Jesus name Amen, Amen, may the Lord bless you and keep you and uh, we'll have an awesome fellowship after and also